Yeah, very good morning. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think uh, the screen is also visible, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Okay, uh, so uh, today we will uh, try to uh, see that fact what we will uh, try to uh, explained yesterday. Okay, means uh, why uh, uh, at the point of extrema maximum uh, means like that sign will tell you that uh, uh, that the surface will be uh, in the same uh, will go in the same direction from that point A B means up to some level. Okay, and uh, which will be Again, an application of this Taylor's formula for function of for two variables. As promised, it is going to be uh, discussed today. Okay. And uh, this expression uh, of uh, having the Taylor's formula on the right side, okay, that also I will try to explain you, I mean, uh, how it is going to be an application of Taylor's formula for function of single variable, okay. Uh, so, I will come back to this formula. Okay, uh, let's, uh, uh, what we are trying to find out is, uh, in the Taylor's formula is, uh, we are trying to approximate a function at a plus h comma b plus k. Now, we know the values of, suppose we know the values of f at a, b, and it's a partial derivatives, uh, a comma b all first order partial derivatives suppose you know okay also suppose you have uh, some higher order derivatives right now suppose you have this fxx exists and that has the point uh, the values are also available how you will utilize this uh, uh, data you can say okay or these values to approximate the function about the point a comma b Okay. So, this is what the, uh, is given by the Taylor's formula. How will we use this to approximate this f of a plus h comma b plus k, provided you know all these things or you can somehow derive these things. Okay. And other thing is, uh, means like up to some level, these are nice. Means like suppose you are interested in somewhere, I will mention like quadratic approximation uh, or uh, cubic approximation like in your function of single variable what we have done is uh, we have approximated function so let's you know g okay instead of f, f okay we have tried to ex expand it as a, a sum of i think a polynomial of degree n plus some remainder term uh, uh, means about the point x naught uh, somewhere okay or okay polynomial and some uh, remainder with x comma x naught. Okay, that we have tried to there. Okay, now uh, now we are interested in the approximating this. So here we say this is a linear approximation when you are truncating the series or Taylor's theorem by after obtaining the first degree polynomial and rest of them you are incorporating in the remainder here. Quadratic approximation leads to the second degree polynomial up to second degree polynomial and uh, uh, the next uh, uh, term which will be a cubic uh, like okay cubic polynomial like okay which will be incorporated in the remainder term and so on okay so this is what we have learned in the function of single variable case for the Taylor's form now uh, let's have this is c uh, we have the point A comma B somewhere, okay, in the X Y plane, okay, and you you perform something H and K are uh, some uh, increment in the direct in the some X direction and Y direction respectively. You can say H we are denoting in the increment in the direction of X, and K is denotes that increment in the direction of Y. Okay, so you will obtain a somewhere point A plus H comma B plus K on the XY. Once you perform this, okay, 
So somewhere here, or uh, let's say this. So it may take this side as well, this side as well, without loss of generality. I am just assuming this here. Okay. Now you join. You can you can certainly find out the line passing through these two points. Okay. Okay. You can uh, tell this is a line something. And also, you can tell that uh, what is the uh, point in, the, in this line segments. Any point on the line segment is you can have this is certainly a plus uh, b h comma b plus d k, where t belongs to zero comma one. So zero. This is a continuous line segment. So when you obtain t, when you put t equals to zero, you will get the a comma b. When you put t equals to one, you are reaching to a plus h, b plus k. So it is increasing with respect to time t. So as t or means um, you say arc length parameter, also it is known as arc length parameter. Okay. Now what we can see is this a and b are constants. So what we uh, define, let's define. I'm just defining the following. F of T is a capital function as F of A plus T H comma B plus T K. So I'm pretty assuming that everything is in nice shape. Means like up to first order and second order partial derivative exists and it is, or you can say I'm assuming that uh, capital F is continuously differentiable at least two times. Okay, up to second order derivative. No. That that is exist and you can set so for doing so on the right side you have small a in the function of two variables this is a function is also you need for if you are imposing the condition differentiability condition on capital F means you are automatically imposing the condition on small f and you well known that what is the differentiability of function of two variable means means you tell you talk about first order partial derivatives if they are continuous you have one time differentiability. If further it is a uh, uh, second order partial derivatives are continuous, then you have second order differentiability and so on. Okay, right. So uh, if we are assuming this here, t is belonging to 0 to 1. So we try to get so now you will treat this as a function of single variable, as a function of t, and we can find out a Taylor series or Taylor's or Taylor result. Taylor, we can apply the Taylor's theorem once the things. Have been imposed in a nice manner. Means capital F is differentiable one time and second time. Okay, so I'm interested in now to incorporate this. A uh, Taylor's theorem tells you that uh, you have uh, because you are interested in f of one is equals to I can write certainly f of zero plus one minus zero times f dash at zero plus 1 minus 0 whole square by 2 factorial time f second derivative at some c, where c lies between uh, 0 and 1. Right? So this is a Taylor's theorem. Okay? So this Taylor's theorem will give you this. So now f at 0 value, f at 1 value, these are all unknown. So what is f of 1? f of 1 is f of a plus h comma b plus k. It will replace t by 1. f at 0 is f at value a comma b. Now, what you have, uh, what you need to uh, identify now f dash and f secondary with you at c. You have the prior knowledge now. Okay. So, you have f of t is equals to what is f of a plus g h comma b plus t k. And we have already imposed the condition that capital F is differentiable at least two times. Okay. So now how to do so you can you know how to differentiate f dash of t you can apply the chain rule. Okay. So what is that is you have to differentiate let's uh, do f by do x time dx by dt apply the chain rule plus 2f by dou y times dy by dt. Okay, so what is x and uh, I'm just I'm just going to mention here, you have the function f of x comma y, and you have x equals to a plus th, 
and y equals to d plus dk. So this is a continuous differentiable curve. dx by dt is what h, dy by dt is k. Okay, so this is going to be h time fx plus k time f y f dash f t is this. And they are evaluated at, you have, this is going to be, uh, you are going to evaluate them at k plus g h comma d plus d k. Right? Okay, so yeah, this is what is happening here now. Okay, now what you are interested in f dash at zero. Means t equals to zero. Means you are evaluating everything on the point a comma b. Okay, so h time fx at a b plus k time fy at a. Now I'm writing it in some different manner as well. So this implies f dash at zero f is equals to h time dou by dou x plus k time dou by dou y f operating on f and then evaluated at the point a b. I'm just writing in this way. Okay, for future point of view. I want to relate it with the previous one. So now, not that this, now this uh, box bracket term will now no more become an algebraic term. Okay, it's not like a, a plus b. Okay, though we are going to treat as a plus b, but be careful about it because they are going to be now operator. Okay, means when you take f inside here, so dou by dou x of f is first derivative of f with respect to x, dou f by dou y is first derivative of f with respect to y. You can't push this f on the left of it. That's what it means. Okay, and I think it will, it can be observed now. Okay, very easily. Now, what you are interested in now, the second derivative at c, c somewhere. Okay, so now, Further, you can uh, now again you can differentiate this, okay, this term, and find out second derivative. So what it will be is uh, so you have uh, f dash at p is nothing but is h time f x plus k time f y. Okay. Now further differentiation, what it will give you is h time f f x x. Okay, time dx by dt, again chain rule, plus h time fxy, so fyx dy by dt. So this is about the first term. And regarding the second term, you have this k time fxy dx by dt plus k time f y y d y by d and now you can fill these all these things here so what you will get is this implies f second derivative at t is equals to uh, so you have dx by dt is h so h is square f x x now d y by dt is k h k dx by dt is h h type k dy by dt is k, here is k square. Now, note that we have assumed that f is differentiable two times, means all the uh, second order partial derivatives are continuous. So, mixed derivative theorem tells you that f y x and f x y both will give you lead to the same value. Okay, so it will come 2 h k time f x y. Okay, right. So, this is going to be h square time f x x plus 2hk time fxy plus k square time fy. So what do you want to interest? We are interested in f second derivative at c means you have this is going to be x square fxx plus 2hk fxy plus k square fyy at the point a plus c h comma b plus c k. Now again I am going to rewrite in the above operator form. Okay. Now see 
I tap to just keep it. So I, if, if I'm writing this, let's the right side, I can write as F second derivative at P is equals to C H time dou by dou X plus K time dou by dou Y square So what it represent? It's a, a kind of a plus b whole square, okay? Because the h square here, k square here, and two h k. Okay, so that will take care when you open it as a square. But keep in mind, do square by do x is not do by do x whole square. It is going to be do square by do x square, do square by do y square. And when do by do x is operated on do by do y, so it's do square by do x do. Okay, so you have to treat this as a as an operator, expand it like a binomial. Okay, means like a plus b whole square. You are right. Similar because why I'm asking, I'm, I'm I'm telling you here binomial one because now in the similar fashion you can further assume that let's say all third order derivatives are possible third order partial derivatives are continuous means third order derivative is exist. So then you can certainly find out that what will be h type dou by dou x plus k type dou by dou y cube straight forward. Okay, by using the binomial formula. Okay, so that will, that will lead to somewhere later. Okay, let's uh, uh, let's deal with it. Okay, so you have this f second derivative at c as this. So what you observe? So this observe what you will observe is f of uh, a plus h comma b plus k which was f of 1 okay i'm just directly substituting all the values is equals to f of a comma b plus h time fx a b plus k time f y at a comma b plus 1 by 2 1 minus 0 by 2 factorial, so 1 by 2 time f second derivative at c just to update h square fx x at a comma, uh, means I write just uh, at the end 2hk 2hk fxy plus k square fyy at the point a plus ch comma b plus c k. So this is going to be the, you can say linear approximation. You have the linear approximation. Okay, because the first three terms will need to give you the approximation and the third term will give you the error. Okay, so here we have assumed that f is differentiable two times. If you assume it's differentiable three times, you can add one more term. So you will get the, uh, here you will get this term additionally in another term so that also we will try to mention now okay now now let's come back to that that uh, uh, extreme values okay let's try to uh, look at that okay now uh, now let uh, a comma p be a point of of local extreme. What will be happening in this, this case? This certainly implies fx at ab0 and fy at ab must be 0. Because this is a point of local extreme. Okay, so the second term and third term will vanish. Okay, now I'm just calling this as some equation number one. Okay, so now let's call it as equation number two. So from one and two, what you will observe this implies this difference a plus h comma b plus k minus f of a comma b. I have pushed that f of a comma b on the right side is equals to. Okay, I'm just uh, uh, one by two time. Okay. Uh, h square fxx plus 2hk fxy plus k square fyy 
at the point A plus C H comma B plus C. Now not that you can you can find out however small possible disk. Okay, centered at AB. So you can play with these values H and K, certainly. Also, so this S and K also can be chosen however small, sufficiently small. Okay. Another point is C is lies between 0 and 1. So again, if you multiply with a number, it's a very small number with a number which is less than 1, it will not increase much. Okay. Still, you can able to choose the value. Okay. So certainly which will not affect, okay, what we are going to play. So right side, let's uh, call it as this is remainder. So I just not by this R of C. It's a, means like, and the is a function of now so we need to predict the sign of this r of c okay for however small possible h and k so that uh, we have to look at that okay now not that so again c is choosing c is also in your i mean it's like c will not harm this so sufficiently h and k you can small you can choose so that uh, the sign of R of C and R of 0 will share the same sign. Okay, you can choose H and K in such a fashion that R of C and R of 0 we should discard because we don't want to stuck with a new parameter C. Okay, so we can use the fact that you can choose H and K however small so that R of C and R of 0 will share the same sign. Okay, so our interest is now to predict the sign of R of 0. Okay, so what is R of 0 is here is, let's say R of 0 is equals to, that's 1 by 2 again, will not matter. Okay, so I've just mentioned it here 1 by 2. Okay, will not matter because it's a positive number. Okay, so this is a positive number. Right, so this will not change the nature of this R of 0. Okay, it's positive is then positive, it's negative then negative. Doesn't matter one by two. Now, what is R of zero is uh, at square f x x at a b plus two h k time f x y at a comma b plus k square time f y y at. Now again, we have seen that. Uh, Okay, so in the local, in the second derivative test, I'm just mentioning here, we were depending on first is fxx into fyy minus fxy square sine, which we need to greater than zero to say local maximum, local extremum. Okay, and also fxx is less than zero, maxima, and greater than zero, then uh, minima that we have seen. Okay, the second derivative test. So let's um, multiply both sides by fxx fxx r at 0, that's going to be means fxx at a, b, at the point, at a point, not the general. Okay, so what will it will give you on the right side is h square times, so I'm just using the abusing notation here, okay, means a comma b, I'm making it as silent, okay, so fxx square plus 2hk fxy time fxx plus k square f y y into f x. Now, I will arrange this right side term in some manner so that I will get the role of this one. Okay, so that further, so 3 will give you 3 implies. So, I'm just mentioning this as uh, equation number 3. What 3 will give you? So, 3 implies f x x into r at 0 is equals to okay so if you carefully so it's h square fxx whole square now here is 2hk fxy fxx so i will add okay k time fxy whole square then it will becomes the whole square of the following so you, that you can easily verify h fxx plus k time fxy whole square so add and subtract plus uh, what is other is k square time f i y f x x minus k 
So what you will get is fxx into fyy minus fxy whole square time theta. Right? Okay. So uh, R of zero, you is you have to see R of zero is is the right side. Okay. So you can uh, assume that R of you can uh, you can avoid the possibility of R of zero here. So I'm assuming that R at zero is constant. Okay. We have to see the sign greater than zero or less than zero. Okay. Now see. If the right side or the right side, you look at this. So first term is the perfect square. So it always remains positive. So this will be also positive whenever this term, whenever this term is positive. So fxx and r at 0 is greater than 0 whenever you have this is fxx into fyy minus fxy whole square is greater than 0. Right. So whenever you have this greater than zero, cos product of these two number is greater than zero, means both will share the same sign. Fxx is negative, then R of zero is negative. Fxx is positive, R of zero is also has to be positive. Right. So once R of zero is suppose R of zero is negative, means Fxx is negative. Okay. And what you have R of zero is negative means you have this is less than zero. Means f of a plus h comma b plus k is less than f of a. Okay, so that will tells you that f of a b is lies above all the possibilities in that case. Okay, now similarly, if r of zero is greater than zero, that will give you the that this f of a plus h comma b plus k means I, you are going to get an. So from the less than zero, you are going getting downward. And when you have the greater than zero, you have you are getting the upward shift. Okay, so and parallelly, whenever f x x is less than zero, you have the maximum again. So that also can be defined, identified now. And f x x is greater than zero, that would also tell you that that's going to be meaning. Okay, so now the very the next case when you have uh, uh, this here, uh, this this is less than zero. This quantity is less than zero. So you can certainly find out the cases where, for some values of h and k, r of zero is less than zero and r of zero is greater than zero. Now, and in the third case, when you have this uh, the second term, this coefficient is equals to zero. So this term will not be in the row. So what we have in the this only perfect scale. So it is only possibilities either greater than equal to zero. So we can't avoid the case when R of zero is zero. Okay. So which tells you that the test is inconclusive. Okay. So we can't tell here. So we know we should know some uh, uh, more knowledge about the function. Okay. okay. So we have or we have to see another test. So okay. So I think I have tried to explain you, okay, how this will tell you, the sign will tell you that upward and direct, uh, downward from the point AB, when AB is a point of extreme, okay? Right, now let's come back to our, uh, uh, that uh, uh, main uh, business, that Taylor's formula for function of more variables, uh, two variables, okay? So, what we have observed in Taylor's formula for linear approximation, what we have observed that this is going to be a plus h comma b plus k is equals to f of a comma b plus h time fx uh, plus k time fy uh, at a comma b, a comma b, I'm writing it once, plus 1 by 2 time h square fxx plus 2hk fxy plus k square fyy at the point a plus ch comma b plus c. Okay, and now 
if you use the further notation, it is going to be f of a comma b, which we have to find that operator notation. So h time 2 by 2x plus k time 2 by 2 by f at a comma b plus 1 by 2 factorial h time 2 by 2x plus k time 2 by 2 by Square at at point a plus ch comma b plus c. Now suppose everything is nice further. Okay, means it has second, not, not second, means it has up to n order all partial derivatives. Did n order partial derivatives are continuous? Okay, are continuous or differentiable? We can say exist. Okay, all those nice properties are attached. So then what you will have is the following. Just a second. Let me. Yeah, uh, yeah, screen is coming, right? Yeah, so uh, let me complete it fast. Okay, I have explained you this. So F at A comma B plus 1 by 2 H time 2 by 2 X plus K time 2 by 2 Y here F at A plus C H B plus C K. Okay. And uh, so as told, if you have up to nth order partial derivative exist. Okay. So in that case, uh, what is the final one I can write by following that notation is going to be uh, first term is f of a comma b plus second term is x time 2 by 2x plus k time 2 by 2y f at a b so you can certainly predict okay so 1 by 2 factorial that is the next term h time dou by 2x plus k time dou by dou y whole square plus at point a comma b what will be the next term is 1 upon 3 factorial h time dou by dou x plus k time dou by dou y Whole cube f at a comma b and so on plus one upon n factorial h time dou by dou x plus k time dou by dou y to the power n f at a plus c h comma b plus c k where c lies between zero and one. Okay, so I'm just so I, what do I mean by binomial using binomials? I'm just writing for an example. I'm writing h time dou by dou x plus k time dou by dou y f at uh, a plus a comma b. Okay, q. What does it mean? It is going to be h q dou q by dou x q applied on f. So f x x x. Plus, okay, so then you have this is going to be 3 times, so 3c1, okay, so that's why 3c0, 3c1, 3c2, 3c3. So 3h square, so 3 uh, you are applying, so uh, f, suppose you have fyxx, okay, so 3h square k plus 3hk square f. X 
वाई वाई प्लस के क्यू एफ वाई वाई एट ऑल एट द पॉइंट ए को सो यू हैव दिस बायोनोमियल कॉफिशन थ्री सी जीरो थ्री सी वन थ्री सी टू थ्री सी थ्री ओके सो दिस इज हाउ यू विल एक्सपैंड similarly four by quadratic okay and so on and the last term is turned out as the uh as the last term will be turned out as error term yes of course when you have the up to nth order partial derivative exists okay so mixed derivative theorem will be applicable for higher order derivative also so you can write this y x x as as x y x as well x x y okay you can perform any uh, any order okay so mixed derivative theorem is applicable okay so for higher order derivative suppose you have suppose uh, fourth order f x x uh, y y okay in the taylor's theorem you can do that okay so f x y x y okay f y y x x all possible choices you can make okay okay so mixed derivative theorem will be applicable for now let's uh, find out the one uh, one problem attached with this taylor's formula which will lead to the quadratic approximation for a certain function certain function which is uh, uh, f of x comma y is equals to sin x into sin y it is sin x into sin y not sin of x into x of sin x into sin okay so find a quadratic approximation to f of x y near the origin so you are talking about near the origin okay so you have the f of x comma y so you can replace uh, a comma b as x uh, as uh, zero okay and h and k by x okay so what you will obtain as origin at origin what will be the possible uh, taylor's approximation so by taylor's formula i am writing i can write this f of x comma y is equals to about the point origin is f at 0 0 okay plus x time do by 2x plus y time do by do y f at point 0 0 plus x time do by do x plus y time do by do y whole square 1 by 2 factorial don't miss that okay time f at 0 0 plus error term that i am going to denote it by a okay so this is going to be the uh, uh, the um, expansion of f of x y about the point 0 0 so this i'm i'm writing now in more simple form so that's going to be f of x comma y is equals to uh f of 0 0 plus x time f x at 0 0 simplified for y at y time f y at 0 0 plus 1 by 2 time x square f x x at 0 0 so I, we are approximating okay so uh, this i am writing as this is an approximation okay let's put the approximation sign and i am writing the error term okay separate so plus you have this is 2 xy time fxy at 0 0 plus y square time fyy at 0 0 so this is the approximation you have to fit that value those values that we are going to put that so that's error term is going to be is 1 by 3 factorial okay as going to be x time do by do x plus y time do by do y q f at yes so it's going to be at cx comma c 0 plus cx comma 0 plus c so this is going to be cx comma c okay so this is going to be the error term so let's find out these values so this simple form also i have already given to you here okay so you have to replace h at k by x y so i so i will do that at the end so let's uh, 
uh, let's read this value. So you have been given f of x comma y is a sine x into sine y. And it is easy to verify that you can differentiate as many times as you wish. Okay, all first order, second order, third order, and so on. All possible first order derivatives are possible here. It's a product of two differentiable functions. Okay, infinitely differentiable functions. So now this implies f at 0, 0 is 0 because sine 0 is 0. Now fx is going to be cos x sine y. This implies fx at 0, 0 is 0 because sine 0 is 0. fy is equals to sine x times cos y. So this implies fy at 0, 0 is 0 because sine 0 is 0. Okay, now fx x is equals to minus sine x sine y. And I hope now you are comfortable in finding the partial derivatives. I am not doing any details that I'm doing this and this, so and so. Okay, so fx x at 0, 0 is also 0. Now fx y, okay, whatever the order you okay follow, fixed derivative theorem is applicable. So I'm differentiating this with respect to y is equals to cos x times cos y. So this implies f x y at 0, 0 is 1. Cos 0 is 1, cos 0 is 1. f y y is equals to minus sine x sine y. So this implies f y y at 0, 0 is 0. So all the possible, all the all possible terms uh, we have found, found right? Okay, now we will carefully uh, substitute them. Okay, so this above will implies fx comma y is equals to, okay, not equals to, approximately equals to. Okay, so you can see this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, so no up to three terms, no terms. Moreover, this fxx is also zero, fyy also zero. Only will survive is fx, y at 0, 0. That value we have found that 1. Okay. So, 1 times 2x, y at 2 will get cancelled. Okay. So, what you will get is x times y. And I hope uh, when you, so it's a quality approximation. Now, if you recall that sin x linearly can be approximated with x. And sine, similarly, sine y can be linearly approximated with y by using the Taylor's formula for function of single variable. And if you put them in product sine x into sine y, okay, so that will lead to the approximation of x into y. So that will lead to the quadratic approximation in function of two variables. Okay, right. So now let's find out the error term. Okay. So you have the error term as follows. So error term is 1 by 3 factorial, that is 1 by 6. Okay, x cube f third derivative plus y cube third derivative plus 3x square y 2 with respect to x and 1 with respect to y 3xy square. 1 with respect to x and 2 with respect to y at cx comma c y. Now you are supposed to identify fxx, fyy, fxy, fx, fx, yy. Okay. Now what you have asked now is how accurate is the approximation? So means you have to look at the bound of the error. In the case when mod x is less than or equals to 0 0.1 and mod y less than or equals to 0 0.1. Okay, so means it is in the rectangle centered at origin with the length 0 0.4. Okay, or rectangle, or it's not, it's a square. Okay, so over the square, if you take any point, what will be the accuracy of the obtained or derived approximation? Okay, right. So means you have to work on the bound of the error term. Okay, right. So now, as we have already identified what are the second order, so I'm just adding here the possible uh, third order derivative. So you have this is fxx is equals to is minus uh, 
cos x sin y minus cos x psi y. Now f x y y is equals to means you have to differentiate one more time here x. I'm just using this now. So minus uh, with respect to x so minus cos x sin y minus cos x sin y because mixed wave derivative theorem is applicable. So I am not bothering about. I'm just choosing which one is easy for me, x, x, y, what will be. So it's going to be, you're going to differentiate this minus sine x cos y. And what you have to find out in the add is fourth term, for the fourth term, f, y, y, y is going to be minus sine x cos y. Sine x cos y. Now, what we are interested in, in the bound of the error term. So, when you take this, uh, if I run this from this, this implies mod E is going to be, so I am using that uh, triangle inequality, mod of A plus B is less than equals to mod A plus mod B, okay. So, I am straight forward using this now. So, less than equals to 1 by 6 times mod x cube time mod fx x x plus mod y cube f y y mod value plus three time mod x square mod y time mod two time x right x and one time y plus three time mod x time mod y square. So two times with respect to y, it is easy to follow once you have done practice. Now, you are, see, you are looking over the reason mod x less than equals to 0.1 and mod y is less than equals to 0.1. Okay, you are looking over this square reason. Okay, so now you have everything here. Okay. But what about the bound of these? So you can certainly find out from here. See, you have used the fact that cos x and sin y are bounded by 1. So they are less than equals to 1. Mod of f x y y is also less than equals to 1. This is f x x y is also less than equals to 1. This implies mod of f y y is also less than. So all are going to be bounded by 1. You can use that fact now. So, what you will observe. So, now this will imply mod E is less than equals to 1 by 6 times. So, mod x cube is going to be less than equals to 0 0.1 cube. It's a positive number, so no need the mod now. Time mod fx is less than equals to 1. So, we know I'm not putting that. Similarly, here 0 0.1 cube into 1. Okay. So, plus 0.1 cube plus now 3 times. So, mod x square is less than equals to 0.1. Mod y is less than equals to 0.1. So, this will also lead to 0.1 square into 0.1 is 0.1 cube. So, 3 times 0.1 cube. The next term also similarly will lead to the 3 times 0.1 cube. And other quantity are bounded by 1. So you have this 3, 3, 6 plus uh, uh, 2 is 8, okay, so 8 by 6 times 0.1 cube, so that's going to be 0 0.001, right. So you can now further simplify is uh, 3, so it's going to be somewhere, right, somewhere 1.333 into 0 0.001, so you can certainly have 0. Point 0, okay, and I will uh, uh, 0, 1, 3, 3, right? Yes. So, this will be error is approximate, um, approximately going to be less than equals to this number, okay, for the quantity approximation. Okay, so now you can also identify that for the linear approximation, what will be the error, what will be the, for the cubic approximation, and you can find that as you increase the power, okay, or as you increase the degree of the approximation, you will get 
more accurate approximation than the previous one. Okay, in the linear approximation, you will get the accuracy is less. Okay, that you can vary. Okay, right. Any question? Okay, fine. So now, uh, what we are going to do next is, say, uh, in this, uh, uh, we are going to define a, uh, I, I don't know whether you are aware about this or not, okay, about the directional derivative. So far, you have uh, obtained the partial derivative with respect to x and with respect to y, okay? So means you are in the xy plane, Okay, or if you have xyz space and you are betting the partial derivative in the direction of x and partial derivative in the direction of y. But it may be the case, okay, that a person, maybe not with the origin, maybe person, let's say point a comma b or uh, let me x not comma y not. And he may move in any direction. What is the rate of change in that direction? Okay, so earlier we were interested in the finding the partial derivative. So this is a domain of f of x, y. Okay, I'm talking about the domain of f of x, y. Okay, this, this will lies in the x, y plane and that will give you the surface. Okay, so we are interested in finding the now rate of change of f in the direction of some vector. This is going to be a vector. So it's, it, I'm going to uh, identify the, what is the rate of change in the direction of this vector u? Okay, and let's say this these components are u one comma u two. And further, it is uh, uh, we will not uh, it will not harm to use that as a unit factor. Okay, so let's uh, okay so let's uh, or uh, again uh, let me uh, have so this is the uh, so this is the uh, direction parallel to this direction u, or it may lies on the, it may maybe uh, maybe the person will here or maybe here, okay. But he will walk in the direction of u. So if you are taking that line parallel to this, okay. Now if you let's choose s as the arc length of the parameter, okay. So what will be the any point on this uh, line is going to be x naught plus. So because it's moving in the direction of u, x naught plus s u one over y naught plus s u two. So this differential or parameterization curve is can be obtained as x equals to x naught plus s u one and y equals to y naught plus s u two. So Along this point, you will have a point on the surface. So that is going to be f of x naught plus s u1 comma y naught plus s u2. And about this point, you have another uh, point on the surface that's going to be f of x naught comma y naught. And what you want are interested in the rate of change. So means you are going to certainly take the difference, divide by the arc length parameter that is s. And then apply limit as s tends to zero. What will be the possible thing will happen here? Means whether the limit will exist or limit does not exist. That limit exists that we will say is a directional derivative of f in the direction of u. Okay. So it, it, uh, so this is uh, uh, this is what I can say is a geometrical interpretation of directional derivative. So a person can walk not only in the x direction or y direction, he can now can walk in any direction. You can give any direction u. Okay, any line you can say y equals to x plus one. Okay, any line. So along which you will see what will be the rate of change of f. Okay, that in that direction. Okay, so this will define. So this will be so in what particular you are interested in now limit s tends to zero 
f of x naught plus s u one comma y naught plus s u two minus f of x naught comma y naught divided by x. You are interested in this. So that is going to be denoted by some. So I am going to just introduce the notation. Okay, of the directional derivative. Okay, let's uh, let's move ahead and we will see more physical interpretation of this directional derivative. Okay, how it will be looks like. Okay, more geometrical. Okay, right. So you have the definition of this. So here we are having this notation. Df by ds. Okay, because f you have the s as a arc length parameter. So we say df by ds in the direction of u and at the point p naught, so p naught is x naught y. Okay, so here is the definition: the derivative of f at p naught in the direction of the unit vector, as mentioned. So whenever you have been asked to find out the deri rational derivative in some direction of the vector, so first you should make it as a unit vector when you want to incorporate with respect to this definition. Okay, this is your first uh, thing you have to do. Okay. Right. So, is the number, so it's going to be give you a number, this provided the limit exists. So, if the limit exists, then this exists. Okay. So, this will define the directional derivative. Now, you can look at now, if you let, if you put u1 equals to 1 and u2 equals to 0. So, if you see u1 equals to 1 and u2 equals to 0. Okay. What it will lead to? So, u1 equals to 1. And u2 equals to so this will not will come into the picture. So f of x naught plus s minus f of x naught y naught divided by s limit s tends to zero. What it will be? It is going to be do f by do x at point x naught y naught. Means here having the direction is x direction. Now, if you choose that pair u1 equals to zero and u2 equals to one, you will get the do f by do y at the point x naught y. Okay, so. It preserves all the properties. Okay, that's what I'm trying to mention it. Okay, right. So let's uh, do one example that find the derivative of this at p naught in the direction of the following unit. So let's have this. So given given that uh, f of x comma y is equals to So given that f of x y is equals to x square plus x y, okay. So x square plus x into y. Okay, you have to find out the derivative of at f at p naught. P naught is one comma two in the direction of the unit vector. This. So you have the direction of the unit vector is i plus j divided by square root of two. So one by root two plus one by so one by root two square plus one by root two square is one. Okay, right. Just you can uh, verify that. And you are interested in the direction of p naught is one comma two. So if you compare x naught is one, y naught is two, u one is one by root two, u two is one by root two. So what you are interested in? Okay. So you are interested in df by ds in the direction of u at p naught, which is going to be if the limit exists again. Okay, is going to be limit s tends to zero. F of so x naught plus s u one. So x naught is one plus s by root two. So f of one plus s by root two, comma y naught plus s time u2, so 2 plus s by root 2. Okay. 
minus f at t not right 1 comma 2 divided by s okay so now you have to determine what is this value so you can have now so you can uh, say this is a equation number one for this case now f of one plus s by root two comma two plus s by root two that is equals to what is given is x square plus x y so first coordinate square so you say one plus s by root two whole square plus x into y okay so this into the so i'm just directly putting the multiplication two plus s by root two plus 2s by root 2 plus s square by 2 and you can have expand this so 1 plus s square by 2 plus 2s by root 2 plus 2 plus 3s by root 2 plus s square by 2 now this is going to be further 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 3 plus s square by 2 plus s square by 2 is plus s square now 2s by root 2 plus 3s by root 2 is 5 times s by root 2 okay now also we can find out f of 1 comma 2 that is going to be 1 square plus 2 1 into 2 that is going to be 3 so therefore now df by ds comma p naught is equals to limit s tends to zero now difference of this so three will get cancelled so what you will remain with s square plus five s plus s square plus five s by root two he will get cancelled divide by s and now you can further simplify it s will get cancelled so if you apply the limit, you are going to get is 5 by root 2. So this is the directional derivative of f in the direction of the unit factor u at point p. Okay. Right. Now, now you further note down, it, it, it will be more simple now. Okay. It will take more simple see okay now let f of x comma y be differentiable okay this is first order partial derivative exists and all continues okay let's assume that okay now then you can see df by ds by using the chain rule means you are in that again in the direction of u comma p naught is going to be do f by do x time dx by ds okay do f by do x you have to evaluate at p naught plus do f by do y evaluated at p naught d y by d and if you recall what was x is x naught plus s time u1 and y is equals to y naught plus s time u2 so this is going to be okay so this is further going to be equals to do f by do x p naught dx by ds is u1 plus do f by do y at p naught time u2 now if you look at more carefully so this implies df by ds at u comma p naught is equals to do f by do x at uh, p naught i plus do f by do y at p naught j this factor dot product with dot product with u1 i plus u2 j 
Why I am writing it in this way? Why? Because it will help you to uh, to uh, generalize this definition to three variables, four variables, and so on. Okay. Now, what we call we find gradient. of f as so it's with f is equals to do f by do x i plus do f by do y j right so whose first component is nothing but the partial derivative in the direction of x and second component is the partial derivative of f in the direction of y so you can increase this dimension now gradient of f that means f of x comma y if you have x comma y comma z so you have gradient of f is 2f by 2x i plus 2f by 2 y j plus 2f by 2 z k and so on you can increase and as many number of variables now what this definition tells you, so I'm just now going further. This is going to be, let's say, one. We have already this one. Now, so this implies, so this implies df by ds is equals to grade f dot unit vector. Okay. So, grade f at p naught, okay, that is uh, at p naught dot p. Okay, right. Now, what further you not down? Now, this is what the definition of direction derivative. You can also use it like this. So, you can find out the gradient of the given function. Take the dot product with the unit factor, and that will give you the direction derivative. Now, what more thing, okay, what more information it will give you is as follows. See, not that, recall your vector calculus, you know that a dot b is equals to mod a, mod b, cos theta. Theta is the angle made between the vector a and b. Okay, and you have this theta is 0, theta is 1, and theta is pi by 2. So, Theta is pi by 2, so a dot p is 0, that will lead to, right? So, this dot product, this is a dot product here. So, this is certainly equals to mod grade f time mod u cap cos theta. At p naught, I'm talking, so p naught is now sin h here. Okay? Right. So, now, this is going to be, since this is a unit vector, so this mod is 1. So, it's going to be mod grade f time cos theta. Now, let's say this is equation number two. Now, what we are interested in, see, what this defines, this defines the rate of change of f in the direction of unit factor u. Okay, where s is the arc length parameter. Okay. So, now the equation two will give you in which direction it will increase rapidly okay or in which direction you will see a rapid decrease or and the third thing you will observe that in which direction you will not observe any change okay so as already mentioned that we are looking at maximum increase maximum decrease and no change Okay, so certainly on the right side, if you look at carefully, means you are, see, this mod grade f is a number. Okay, it's a number. So your entirely depends on this. And you know, cos theta will be maximum value is 1. When? When theta is 0. Right? So when theta is 0, means they are parallel. Which is parallel? Means if you are moving in that direction now, so df by ds at p naught is going to be mod grade f. If you are going to move in the direction of the grade direction, gradient of f in the direction. So if 
So that will give you the max, you will get the maximum increase in the direction of this gray tab. Now you can also notice that cos theta is minimum at minus also minimum value is minus one, which will occur at five, right? Cos phi is minus one. So it's a opposite, so it will give you the minus mod gray So what it will leave you? So that you will get rapid decrease in the direction, the negative direction of gray And when you will see no change, means it means this derivative value is zero. When? When cos theta is zero, when theta is pi by two. Means when you have a vector u which is orthogonal to the gradient of f. Okay. So if you move in that direction, which is perpendicular to the greater direction, you will see no change. Okay. So these are the properties of the directional derivative. You see maximum increase in the direction of greater. You will see the maximum decrease in the direction of negative greater opposite direction. And you will see no change in the direction which is orthogonal to the gradient. Okay, so by looking at the values of theta, theta is 0, theta is pi, and theta is pi by 2. Okay, right. So, these are the properties attached with the directional derivative. Okay, now uh, this is a physical interpretation of directional derivative. It, it is a very, uh, if you look at this, uh, it's a picture is too complicated, but let's see, uh, let's try to get into it. So you have this surface is uh, here, okay, surface is with blue lines, okay. Now, what we have done in the, when you are finding the partial derivative with respect to x, you are uh, at point x naught, y naught, you are drawing the, uh, you are fixing y naught, okay, right? And you are drawing a tangent plane, which cuts the surface at the curve, Okay, and then you are finding the uh, at x naught y naught you are seeing lo locating the point on the curve, and at that point you are finding the tangent that will lead to the f of dou f by dou x at x naught y naught. Now, but now here it is not fixed direction, not in the x direction, not in the y direction. What you can do? So you have this direction. Okay, so you have a direction x passing through the x naught y naught point. Okay, so what you can do is you can certainly draw a tangent plane passing through this. So you can fix this line and you can make a tangent plane passing through this, which will cut the surface along the line. And you will get the image here and draw the tangent that will give you the directional derivative. So this will give you the physical interpretation of directional derivative. So instead of the, so what is difference here is now this tangent plane earlier when you look with the dou f by dou x, so that tangent plane was parallel to the xz plane. Okay, when you're looking for the dou f by dou y, the tangent plane which you draw is x equals to x naught, you're fixing. So that was, so that, that tangent plane was parallel to the yz plane. But now it is no more either in the yz plane parallel or xz plane, maybe any way, any direction now. So that tilted, not tilted, okay. So that may be in any direction. So it, not in any direction, in the direction of now u. Okay, that has been tilted in the direction of u, you can see. Okay, so this is how you can understand this physical interpretation of directional derivative. So as already, I have already defined the gradient factor of f at a point this is the vector plus, uh, which is obtained by evaluating the partial derivatives of f at p. Okay, and I've already explained that the directional derivative can be written as a dot product of gradient with the unit vector u. Okay, so the dot product of the gradient of f at p naught and that we have already seen, provided this f is differentiated. Okay, in a region containing the point. So this is uh, this condition can be easily verified. Okay. Uh, okay, so this problem, uh, which is uh, application of the dot product, okay, uh, we will look at this problem in the tutorial. Okay, so I've already explained the following properties of directional derivatives. So, as mentioned, 
the function f increases most rapidly when u is the direction of gradient. Okay, when you move in the direction of gradient. So uh, that will and what is the maximum value is mod gradient. So the max. So see these three properties can be asked in gate exam as well. Okay. So you may have the question in the most in, the most rapid increase, most rapid decrease, okay, or no change. Okay, so I have already explained you that when you have that unit direction in the direction of the grade F, then you will see the rapid increase. Okay, and the maximum value is mod grade F. Similarly, F decrease most rapidly in the direction of minus grade negative direction of the grade f okay and the uh, uh, the minimum value is minus mod grade f now no change will be noticed in any direction u orthogonal to the gradient provided this gradient should be non zero okay right okay so uh, uh, let's uh, uh, we have completed now. Okay, so uh, let's uh, stop here. Please note down this problem. Okay, and I uh, try to solve this problem. Okay, fine. If you have any question, you can ask. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.